we can see the harmful effects of the Ninth Circuit's decisions up and down the West Coast as cities have become overrun by encampments. It is completely incorrect when people say that this case and this decision somehow limits what cities can do to regulate encampments, to sweep camps, to move camps. It's just manipulative hogwash. What's going on at the West Coast is what's coming to a neighborhood near you. My name's Ed Johnson, and I'm the Director of Litigation at the Oregon Law Center. This case originated uh, in our Grants Pass office in 2017. We started to hear from people in the community who were living outside, who were being awakened in the middle of the night by the police and told essentially there was no place else, no place at all for them to sleep in the city. Um, and then we also heard that people were getting ticketed and arrested and jailed. And the federal district court in Medford uh, found in our favor that criminalizing um, someone for living outside and trying to stay warm and dry with a blanket violates the cruel and unusual punishments clause of the Eighth Amendment. The Ninth Circuit agreed with the district court and upheld that. The city um, petitioned the Supreme Court to hear the case and the Supreme Court agreed to hear the case back in January. Hi, my name is Theana Evangelist. I'll be arguing for Grants Pass in Grants Pass versus Johnson. It's an incredibly important case that will have nationwide ramifications on how cities are able to address homelessness. The Ninth Circuit held that cities are not allowed to regulate camping in their jurisdictions until they have enough shelter for everyone. That has made it impossible for cities to address very unsafe and unhealthy conditions and to get people the help that they so desperately need. Now we've seen the phenomenon of people refusing offers of help and services. That's unacceptable. It's unacceptable to leave people in dangerous encampments. It's unacceptable as a society for us to continue to condone this sort of human suffering. And we've seen in Portland and Seattle that cities have to grapple with very dangerous conditions at the same time as they are working on long-term solutions to end homelessness. It is completely incorrect when people say that this case and this decision somehow limits what cities can do to regulate encampments, to sweep camps, to move camps. Um, there's nothing in the Ninth Circuit decision that um, prohibits a city from saying no tents, for example. The only thing that cities can't do is the one thing that Grants Pass has done and, and wants to continue to do, and that is to make it unlawful for people to sleep outside with a blanket when they have nowhere else to go. To cover themselves with a blanket so that they don't die of hypothermia uh, on every inch of city land 24 hours a day. For obvious reasons, our assertion is that that's cruel and it's unusual because that kind of sweeping 24 hour a day, every inch of public land um, banishment and punishment is very uncommon. And the rule in this case doesn't apply when there is available shelter space. So if someone is offered shelter and they decline it, they could still be ticketed and arrested under this decision. In Grants Pass, there is no homeless shelter. There are no available shelter beds for people. And so that issue hasn't, hasn't come up in Grants Pass itself. What he's saying is, is just, it's just manipulative hogwash. Hi, my name is Brian Boteller. I'm the executive director of the Grants Pass Gospel Rescue Mission. I have been at less than half full since 2020. Are there need for other services? Yes, there are need for other services. Is there 
uh, enough shelter beds? Yeah, there's enough shelter beds. There's enough shelter beds for the folks that want to leave homelessness. I guarantee you, all those folks that are there in the park or they're in the parks do not all want to leave homelessness. I'm Bruce Murray. Uh, I'm a medical doctor here in Grants Pass. I've lived in the community for more than 35 years. Uh, practicing physician, uh, now semi-retired and doing work with those that are homeless and their medical needs in Josephine County in Southern Oregon. So a lot of thermal injuries, hypothermia, trench foot, uh, or literally frozen limbs that required amputation. So living outside in tents is not a joy. And I think that's one of the myths is, is people choose to, do, to live this lifestyle. They're not the ones that I see. We're fortunate that we have been able to eke out space in four parks here in Grants Pass where we can see people we can arrange follow-up, we can arrange visits afterwards, but we travel as a team uh, with behavioral uh, specialists, mental health specialists, uh, uh, as well as medical team to go out there. And, and we, we, are, we can do it all within a relatively small centralized area. Outside of Grants Pass, it's heavily wooded and mountainous and not very hospitable. The propensity, they've got to cook on something. Uh, we, we, we are in a fire, um, zone where every August we burn somewhere in Oregon significantly. I worry that access to care, which has been my theme, is going to be much more difficult. Access to hygiene and safety is going to be much more difficult to, to, ask, to assure um, if uh, they criminalize uh, living in parks. We don't have any alternative. It's not like they have anywhere else to go. It's all framed like our problem is, uh, you know, we're upset with people sleeping in parks. It doesn't cost us tens of thousands of dollars every year to clean up after sleeping in our parks. We're not uh, afraid of uh, our children playing in the playground accidentally uh, getting poked by uh, someone's pillow. It's only cities within the Ninth Circuit now that are subject to this rule that's made it impossible and has caused widespread paralysis. And we can see the harmful effects of the Ninth Circuit's decisions up and down the West Coast as cities have become overrun by encampments and people who need help are not getting it. That has effectively wrecked a state's ability to regulate their own property and and within within a city to tell them what they can and can't do inside the public spaces in their community and i hope that they will overturn that if they don't what will happen is whatever's going on on the west coast and i hope that the rest of the nation looks at it what's going on at the west coast is what's coming to a neighborhood near you